Before we jump into the episode today, I want to share something with you from my heart. First of all, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I really can't tell you how much your support means to me. We've been doing the podcast now for almost four years. I can't even believe it. And I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you that listens, shares an episode with your friends, sends me a DM or a text message letting me know how an episode resonates with you or any aha moments. Seriously, I couldn't be more grateful to be able to create this podcast. It has been such a blessing in my life and I love hearing the ways it's been able to provide value in yours as well. One thing you might not know is how much work it takes to be consistent with a podcast. In fact, did you know that the majority of podcasts don't make it past episode number 10? And we are well, 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 well beyond that. And it's just a lot thinking of the episodes, recording them, editing them, managing the guests, making sure that everything runs smoothly and gets uploaded consistently and regularly. And so that's why I have created an amazing opportunity for you to support the podcast monetarily. And in exchange for that, you will get exclusive premium subscriber content. So for as little as $3 a month, you can become a premium subscriber subscriber of the podcast. And every month I will upload new voice guided workouts and breathwork meditation audio for you. So that way you can work out with me coaching you in your ears. You can also take a moment to reduce your stress and relax and come down and ground down with one of my breathwork audios. So if that is on your heart to support the podcast for as little as $3 a month to become a premium podcast subscriber, I can't tell you how much that means to me and the growth of this podcast. I appreciate you. If you're interested, click the link in the description, become a premium podcast subscriber, new content every month. And while supplies last, I'll send you an exclusive podcast coffee mug so you can have your self-love and sweat coffee every morning. I appreciate you. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to Self Love and Sweat, the podcast, the place where you'll get inspired to live your life unapologetically, embrace your perfect imperfections, break down barriers, and do what sets your soul on fire. I'm your host, London Souza. Hey friend, it's me, London Souza, online lifestyle transformation coach. I help people all over the world just like you who know they are meant for more, get their mind right and their body tight and go from crazy busy to crazy happy. And hey, if it's our first time meeting, welcome. So happy to have you. And if you've been with us for a while, it's so great that you're here too. I'm really excited to share this episode of the Self Love and Sweat podcast with you. Sabrina is a marathon runner and fitness enthusiast living in NYC. She moved there from Germany six years ago for her job as a digital marketing manager for the travel website Loving New York. She also runs her own business as a running coach, blogger, and social media expert at runningbrina.com. She inspires hundreds of thousands of runners all over the world, including myself, and we also have the same birthday. Welcome to Self Love and Sweat the Podcast, Sabrina. Hello. Hi. Thanks for being here. So happy to have you. Thank you for inviting me. How are you doing? How's New York? I'm great. Today, uh, the weather is a little rainy, and yesterday was super windy, but other than that, everything is great. Awesome. I'm so glad to have you. This is such a treat. Um, Sabrina and I met, how many years ago did we meet in New York when I came? Five years ago, maybe four. Yeah. I can't remember. I didn't do my, I didn't do my fact checking before this to count the years, but I think, yeah, I think it was like four or five years ago. uh, We met in New York City to create content for the for Runtastic. And mm-hmm. we made some workout videos and training videos. And yep. I feel like we just 
connected. Like it was just like, huh, I felt like I had known you for such a long time. Yeah, that's true. And I, was, I remember I was so proud uh, doing this with you because I knew you from like social media and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to meet her. And then now you're my friend. <laughs> yeah. And then we did, we did like some leg exercises in front of the Brooklyn Bridge and it was so beautiful and went for some runs mm-hmm. in New York. What a treat to live there. How was it to move from, because you know, I moved from uh, California to Austria. And then you, we kind of like, yeah, switched places. You came from Germany yeah. to New York. How was, how was that for you? Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Share a little bit about that. Um, I mean, in the beginning, of course it was hard, you know, and you can probably agree like being away from your family and, you know, living in a new place. And it's just also in the beginning, I wasn't too great with my English. So, you know, I was a little shy speaking and, um, but I don't know, like I, right now I don't see myself ever leaving here again. So <laughs> maybe in New York one day, who knows, but um, not going back to Germany, oh, I guess. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very, very different. And do you feel like, um, did you, were you running before you moved to New York or did you get started running when you moved there? Um, I ran before, but different. So I um, ran always on the treadmill, really only to lose weight that was like my goal like I had this like picture in my head how I wanted to look so I was like okay let's go on the treadmill and run for an hour and you know (laughs) that's what I did before I moved here and um then I came here and um I don't know I just remember like walking by the pier near Chelsea area and I just saw all these people running and I was like what is going on everyone is so fit here you probably know from like California it's I guess the same over there. Everyone is just active outside doing some sort of exercise. So um, I was like, okay, so let me try and run outside. And then I really started running outside and then eventually signed up for races. And then, uh, yeah, ran my first marathon a couple of years later. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So what the transition from the treadmill to outside, I mean, an hour on the treadmill, that's a, that's a long time. I've done, yeah, I've done worse. So when the weather is really shitty here in the winter and there's like so much snow out that you can run on the road and I'm training for most of the times it's that I'm training for the NYC half, which is in March. And, um, so sometimes we get really like a lot of snow and then I'm running on a treadmill for hours, like hours. Not, <laughs> it's not, so it's, me- it's good mental training too, you know? Yeah. And you love it. And you yeah. love it. So on your, um, your bio on your website, I was like reading over, um, a lot of stuff just kind of, yeah, I mean, I know you and I love you and we're friends, but I was kind of, <laughs> you know, doing my work to prepare here for this, for this chat, but you wrote something on your, um, about me section and it really resonated with me because I shared a little bit about this in my running experience on a previous episode. And what you said was, I always thought that in order to be a runner, you had to be born a runner. And I think Mm. a lot of people have these like expectations of what it means to be a runner. And so what would that even mean to be born a runner? Like you just start running when you're a kid and run out of the womb and keep going. (laughs) (laughs) Right. No, I mean, for me personally, when I, I grew up uh, really hating any sort of sports, I really skipped every gym classes in school uh, when they were going on the track and doing some sorts of, I don't know, 400s or 200s or whatever. I always had an excuse that I couldn't do it. Uh, And even swimming, like I hated everything. And um, really my first real physical exercises was this like treadmill running that I just explained. (laughs) So, um, and I think I was also a little terrified in the beginning because I thought, okay, you in order to be fast or be good at it, you have to somehow do it a little longer than I than I did. So um, I don't know. But then I realized, especially getting more involved here with the running community, that and we have a lot of fast people here in New York City, a lot of Olympic qualifiers, and you know, but. To me, really, it doesn't matter how fast you are or, you know, how long you can go or anything like that. If you just started running or if you ran cross country in high school or something, uh, you're a runner when you, when you run your miles. Like it's, it's you know, it, and, and also it doesn't matter really how fast you, you go. It's not that you have to be born to, you know, do it. 
it's just you either like it or you're not and if you're doing do it and you're a runner so it's pretty simple to me now <laughs> yeah now right I know I always say if you run you're a runner you know I a lot of people ask me like or a lot of people don't want to say like I'm a runner because they think like oh like you said I haven't run you know far enough yet yeah. or I haven't been running yeah. long enough or I'm not fast yeah. so that all yeah. of a sudden you know makes yeah. me not a runner. And I, yeah. I just always remind people like, Hey, if you run, you're a runner, there's no magic distance. There's no special race. There's not a certain pace that you have to hit exactly. in order to be considered a runner. But do you remember when you finally considered yourself a runner? Was it when you started to get on the treadmill? Was it when you started to get outside running? Can mm-hmm. you, was there ever a I shift I think when there? I finished my first race. So to me, really, I, I was always very com- competitive and, um, when it came to running so in I would say like six weeks in here training outside I signed up for my first half marathon um, which wasn't the best idea looking back now because now I have more experience and I know you should give yourself a little bit more time before you you know challenge yourself like that Um, and also maybe have more time to build up to that distance (laughs) but um, I remember when I got my medal I was like okay you know now I'm a runner (laughs) when you got the medal yeah, but yeah, that's how I felt. Like I ran my first race, my first half marathon, you know, and I was very proud of myself. And I think, I I don't know, like, I'm not sure if, if that, if that's really was the day where I was like, okay, and now I'm a runner, but I felt more like official, like kind of more into the community, like, because everything, everyone here is really doing races. Like they train there in the summer. If you ask someone, it's more like, so which, which marathon are you doing this year? You know? So it's not like, Oh, I'm training for nothing right now. You're always, there's always something you train for. So once I was involved in this whole community of always preparing for something, I guess that's was, that was when I more felt like a runner. When you were, yeah, consistently running, had a a race that you were training for, racking up those medals, girl. So you had that first medal, but now you've done five marathons (laughs) over 20 half marathons. So I'm sure that you have a ton of medals, a ton of medals. Oh yeah. I have them all and I have them all hanging on my wall. (laughs) Do you like looking at them? Do they make you proud? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially the the marathon medal. Which one? Well, um, I have five, so um, all of them. (laughs) All of them. Yeah, totally. But um, Yeah, I mean, we just moved into a new place, but before they were hanging by the um, entrance door, so by the apartment door. So whenever I left for a run, I would always see them and they really always motivated me to just look at them. But now they're in the bedroom, but I still see them all the time. (laughs) You can still gaze at them. So that's a lot of, I mean, not only is the race of a marathon and even a half marathon a long distance, but that's a lot of mileage of training and a lot of time running. And like you said, even sometimes multiple hours on a treadmill, which I'm like, God bless you. That is just (laughs) miraculous. Um, What do you think about when you run? Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess it depends a little bit on the day and the mood. Um, But fun fact, I'm really the most uh, creative when I'm running. So like you said, in the beginning, I uh, have a creative uh, full-time job. So I um, have my best ideas while I'm running. And uh, sometimes I really have to stop and write those ideas down, even just like little bullet points, because I keep forgetting. Like once the run is over, it's like you're in like such a weird zone. Um, I don't know when, uh, so I write those bullet points down while I'm running sometimes. And, um, but also... I mean, during the race, really, you're super focused, of course, and you you just try to tell yourself that you can you can do it. You know, like have this positive mindset. Um, but yeah, I mean, in training, it's really it could be anything from like what I'm eating when I'm done <laughs> to what I'm doing today. Or that's really always like those- what I think about towards the end of any workout or run or anything. Yeah. Like, I don't know, five or 10 minutes before it's over. I'm like, okay, what am I going to eat afterwards? What's on yeah. the menu? <laughs> or just this morning it was raining outside and, um, it, it wasn't even bad. It's just, I mean, I'm wearing glasses. So, and also when I'm running and of course when it's raining, it's like super annoying. 
Um, so I was like, oh God, this really sucks. But then I, I, uh, I thought about the Berlin Marathon last year where it was like pouring outside. It was so bad. The rain was so bad. And I was like, really? You're complaining about this little rain right now? Remember Berlin? You know, like thoughts like that. That's what I think of. Just, yeah. Pepping yourself up in the moment. And yeah, I love that you say some of your greatest ideas come, come through running. Mm, They really do. Mm -hmm. Even for my own website, like, you know, like I'm thinking of, you know, what could be my next article, what could people like and all these things. And they always come when I'm running. Mm. What's Mm. been your, what's been your proudest running moment? What are you most proud of accomplishing? Um, always the marathon, of course. Um, I guess last year, uh, there's a specific moment that I can think of. It was during the New York City Marathon, which is in November. And there is this long stretch um, on Fifth Avenue. It's like the last three miles of the race, maybe a little more. But um, it's super hard because it goes uphill. And I ran, I just ran a PR in Berlin, which was in September prior to that. And I was super happy with that time. So going into New York, I was like, okay, this is fun. You know, it's my hometown. You know, all my friends are here. Let's just enjoy. And then on that stretch, I checked my time and I was like, wait, I could, I did the math and I was like, oh, okay, I could beat Berlin. And then that was just some like such a great moment for myself because I know I, I, I trained so hard and I, but I just didn't have the expectations, you know, to run the PR that day. So yeah, and then I took off and I ran really, really fast because <laughs> I wanted to make sure, you know, to really get that time. And um, uh, yeah, I, I even, um, I beat my time, my Berlin time. I PR'd in New York City. And when I crossed that then of shine, that was really a great moment. Is that the video where I remember you posted, I think your husband was recording you and you were running and then you like look up and you're like waving and super excited. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, that yeah, the, yeah. was that the race? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's the race. Yeah, yeah, it was a I great loved race. that yeah. video. He was like yeah. calling after your name, and and you kind of realized he was there, and you yeah. got all excited yeah, and your bright yeah. smile. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and really like um, the New York City Marathon. Just to give some background, is is a more challenging course than Berlin because Berlin is pretty flat, you know. But you know, New York has a lot of bridges, hills, and all that. So yeah, I was very proud to even run better than Berlin in New York City this uh, last year. Mm, so good. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So you have, yeah, quite a following on social media. You inspire hundreds of thousands of people, you know, all over the world to, including myself, like I said, to run. I remember you gave me a, um, like we were talking one time you came to Austria for a project we were working on. And I was like, yeah, I just, I want to be running more. And I was like, I think I'm going to run 20 K a week. And you're like, Oh, go for 25. And so for some weeks I just really was like, okay, yeah. Challenge accepted, motivation accepted. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was really, really great. And now I'm back on that. I really want to hit around 20 to 25 kilometers every week. It makes me feel good. And I'm not at the moment, I'm not training for any particular race. I just run because I love it. And like you said, it just clears your mind. You can be creative. You can have a lot of breakthrough moments and things like that. But, um, Mm -hmm. how does that feel to know that you're inspiring so many people all over the world? I'm sure you get tons of messages and, and things like like that but how does that feel mm, it's great of course um and sometimes honestly I don't even realize um it's it's funny because there was this one time where I went to a race here in uh, New York with uh, Adidas runners and we were just there to cheer and um Honestly, like one of the first times that I was actually cheering because it's always me running, racing all over the place. So I was really feeling it. You know, I was like screaming at everyone and like trying to, you know, like encourage them. And we were like, we were like down that hill. So it was a great place to cheer. But anyways, there were like so many people passing by who knew my name where even my friends were like, Sabrina, like what the hell is going on? And I was really, you keep forgetting how many people you are actually, um, reaching with you know if you have a certain amount of following but I think to be honest I'm I'm still same person and also I would post the same if I had 500 followers you know like it's not any different or um, I'm just myself and I just share 
what I do and what I love doing and I share my advice and um yeah that's that's really it <laughs> yeah no you are you to the fullest I yeah <laughs> and, and like you said we've known each other for some years and the stuff the way that we talk and then the way that you are on on social media it's like it's running Brina it's Sabrina it's the it's the mm. exact same and that's why I'm so happy yeah. that you're here <laughs> and just being able to share yeah your story and I were they like yelling running Brina or do they call you Sabrina because I feel like for the longest time no. before, I always would they, say like running Brina, like that was like your name to me. I know, I know. <laughs> That's weird, right? And the funny thing is really that this name, running Brina, like when I uh, created this Instagram account, I would say it was six, seven years ago, really, when Instagram was not really that a thing, right? That's when I came up with that name. And really, I only came up with that name because my dad, uh, calls or s- called and still calls me Brina. It's like a nickname, but moreover like a child nickname. So I was like, okay, so which name could I could I use? Brina, Sabrina. I think Sabrina was taken. So I was like, okay, let's do Brina. I didn't even really like put so much thought into that. You know, if I only knew that people would call me Running Brina one day, <laughs> you know, I would probably use uh, Running uh, Sabrina then underscore or something. But you know. I wasn't thinking that, you know, this could take off like that. But yeah, it's actually a name that my dad came up with. <laughs> yeah, I have you saved in my phone as Sabrina Running Brina in my phone. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think that's, well, I mean, because I first stored your phone number then when I met you in New York. And so, I don't know, I, I know that there have been other colleagues I've worked with named Sabrina. So I, I know that was just like my way of distinguishing like yeah. which Sabrina this was in my phone. But it was funny because I see it when we're messaging and stuff on WhatsApp and I'm like, no, I'm not going to change it. You're just going to be Sabrina running Brina in my phone forever. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It sticks. It fits so well. So um, you're married. How long have you been married for? Uh, wait, uh, six years. Six years. <laughs> yes. Wait, uh, Almost, yeah. Yeah, six, yeah. yeah. Six, six. What's it like being married to you as a runner with your you know, your oh. competitiveness, your drive, your persistence, and quite frankly, the hours of time you spend training to reach your goals. What's it like? Yeah, I think I got very lucky. Um, he's very understanding <laughs> um, for, uh, you know, early, early, early mornings. And uh, in the summer, it can be early as 5 p.m. on the weekends, you know, to like beat the heat or the sun or something like that. And uh, I almost o- always go to sleep very early because you know, sleep is key for my recovery and my overall mood. <laughs> um, so I don't really drink much and, um, yeah, but he's, he's very understanding and he works out too. He's a, tri- he, um, did his first triathlon last year. So, um, every race that I have, he's trying to come and, uh, cheer or he brings whatever I need during the marathon. I think I saw him four times with, and he had like different things during the marathon, like sparkling water here, banana there, and here you need this, you need that. So he's very supportive. Um, But I can only imagine, I mean, if you meet someone who, you know, is not as understanding or is just not living that lifestyle, it can be very, very challenging, you know? But um, I think also we kind of grew into this together because it wasn't the case. Like he didn't meet me that way. It's just... I I slowly, you know, developed this <laughs> crazy running love. So he had no other choice, I guess. But he's really supportive and part of your team. Oh yeah, and- oh for sure, yeah, for sure. And he also, I think, uh, maybe you wouldn't admit that, but I guess I motivate him too sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure that yeah. you do. But I I know that from a lot of people who reach out to me, it is a a struggle sometimes with. Um, your partner because sometimes they don't understand like, yeah, why you need to be going to bed so early and waking up early to work out or why you continuously, you know, train for these long, long distances, which require, you know, hours and hours of running um, per week. And that can be really, you know, devastating to a lot of people and also like hinder, you know, their drive for wanting to train, even if it's just, yeah, basic, basic fitness or things like that. And I, and I love that you say that you motivate him because I think that's really important. You know, a person, I mean, it could, I mean, I'm sure that you probably wouldn't date someone who like wasn't physically active at all. But I think even if that person is not, you know, super, super, active or a runner or into fitness or triathlons or whatever, just having that support is 
is so important and so critical. Yeah. And so yeah, and I, mm-hmm. we, we also, we also train together. So, I mean, we go to the gym, to, to the gym together and that's something I really enjoy, for example, because it, it's fun to like try to keep up with him or when it comes to like, like training, like he's trying to keep up with me and it's like, it's fun, you know, like, like you said, like I can't not picture myself um, being with someone who is not active at all you know, or drink or something and like party guys or something like that. I don't, I just couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do it. It wouldn't work well. It wouldn't work yeah. well. Yeah. And you're so diligent and you're so persistent. Um, yeah, because I know you. And then also when you would come to Austria or we would meet up or, or whatever. Um, yeah. It's like we hit the gym, lifting yeah. the weights, doing the runs. You're yeah. just so diligent and so <laughs> yeah. persistent, which I love because I love being around people like that. You know, I'm that way too. And like, yeah, I mean, not everybody has to understand that, of course. And I don't need everybody to understand that and support that in order to continue to do it. I do it for me because I love it, right. but it's always just so refreshing to be around you and yeah. around someone like you where you're like, no, this is like the gym time. We go in, this is what we're doing. Right. Okay. Afterwards, here's what we're eating. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. That was so cool. Here's yeah. your gym pass. Here you can go. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> yes, boom. Here's your gym pass. Here's your things. Here's where. We, here's the fridge where you can keep your food. Yeah. Here's this, this, yeah. and this. And here's I just, your salad. Yes. Here's here's the place where you can get this. Here's the place where you can get that. This is where the healthy food is. Here's the gym. Yeah. Here's the leg Amazing. press. All the things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that's what keeps you. Like, does is it the training for the particular races? If no races, like if races didn't exist to train for, mm-hmm. like, would you think you'd still be as diligent mm-hmm. and persistent, or do you feel like it's that that goal that that yeah, the goal that keeps you fired up and focused? I definitely realize that I do need goals. Like, I, I also need a plan. Uh, I need structure. Um, so even though I could probably write my own plan, I still have someone. Um, his name is Kai. He's amazing. He's my coach and he, uh, he writes my program and I follow that. I need to, cause yeah, like I said, I need structure. And when it comes to races, I guess, yes. Um, I mean, for this year, it looks pretty much like the Berlin marathon is not going to happen. Well, it's not going to happen that day, but probably also not going to happen at all. And, um, that was my goal race. Um, so yesterday I was chatting with my coach and we came up with the idea to just still run the Berlin marathon just in New York city, (laughs) you know, so I'll probably run the, I keep the date, I keep the training, I'll prepare as it was Berlin, but I'll just do the distance somewhere here with him next to me on my bike. Okay. So he'll, he'll ride his bike next to you and you'll run. Yeah. Okay, cool. I was going to say, are you going to do that alone? (laughs) I would. I would. You would? I mean, if you run the marathon, you're pretty much by yourself too. I mean, of course you have the crowds, but your head is still with, it's just you and your head or your mind, you know? So I I think I could do it by myself too, but it's just Yeah, you for sure could. I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> just asking and picking. I've done uh, just half marathons, just half. I've done five halves. And at the, at the end, I'm always like, oh my God, I can't imagine like double, you yeah, know? Yeah. And you know what? That's the tricky part for me always in a marathon. I am so much better the second half of a marathon mentally than I am in the first, because in the first you're like, mile 10, who? mile 11, mile 12. But once you hit that half, the half marker, you're like, oh, okay, well, I've done the half of it. Now I'm just, you know, I'm almost there kind of. That's what I keep saying to myself. And um, yeah, in Berlin, even last year, I was running it with a friend for most of the time. And I remember we crossed mile 13 and I was like, hey, we did the half, we're good. You know, let's do it. I'm just another half. <laughs> yeah. Do you focus on miles, not kilometers? Yes, miles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When I lived in America, I did miles and now I do kilometers. I don't know, just because that's how everyone else is talking yeah, and it's, tracking. It's easier, and- yeah. Hey, in the beginning when I first moved here, I did kilometers, but I got to a point where I was like, okay, this, I, I don't know how to talk to you. Like, I'm in kilometers, you're in miles. That, what, you know, I don't know how to talk to you. We don't speak <laughs> the same language. Yeah, it's like so weird because people wouldn't understand what I was saying, you know. I'm like doing 13K today. Uh, okay, how many miles is that? So I got to a point where I just kept talking miles. <laughs> 
Switching over, switching over. So I got some questions. I posted on Instagram a few days ago um, that I would be interviewing you and I was really excited about it. And I got a couple, uh, just, yeah, I got a bunch of questions, but I chose a couple that I thought, um, yeah, would be the best to cover right now because I feel like this is a question I get a lot too and I'm sure that you do as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open them up here. And then this first question comes from Liz on the move and she asks, what is a good breakfast before running and healthy meals for recovery after long runs? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I guess it depends a little bit on how long your run was going to be. If I run not long, not more than an hour, most of the times I don't eat anything, but only because I know how to fuel the day before or the night before. Um, and Sometimes it's a banana, but before long runs, I make sure that the meal the night before is high uh, in carbohydrates. Um, I oftentimes now have pasta, <laughs> which I in the past we really never had because I got stomach problems, but now it's fine. I don't know why. So I'll have pasta the night, be the night before, and then in the morning I'll have a banana and maybe a bottle of, um, I don't know, Gatorade or something something with electrolytes and um yeah though so that's before the run and then after well to be honest i always have a hard time eating if i run a longer so like let's say over two hours or so i don't know i'm not just not as hungry weirdly i don't know why <laughs> um but um x is always good so i have egg whites and maybe like two three eggs in it and i have that and um yeah later on like maybe some fish rice greens something like that that are so protein you know carbs just it's, keeping it balanced keeping it balanced yeah. but yeah i do the same too like i if i run it, usually if i run it's like in the morning ish you know like um and mm -hmm. i i personally don't like to have a lot of food in my stomach before then but i can generally gauge it like if i wake up and i'm like hmm yeah, I think I might need just like a half a banana yeah. or something. Let that sit yeah. for 20 or 30 minutes and then head out. I can generally kind of gauge what my blood sugar is doing based on yeah, how I feel same. when I wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, but I really like the feeling of running on an empty stomach in the morning ish. I just feel uh, faster, lighter, not so like there's yeah. nothing really moving around in there. So yeah, I do the mm -hmm. same there too. Totally. Um, okay. The other question we got is from. I'm totally going to butcher this name, but I'll do my best. It's an mm -hmm. Instagram handle, so I can't even say that this is for sure the name. But Anch Sarwal, how do you increase stamina and speed? Well, my coach always say, says in order to run fast, you have to run fast. <laughs> so meaning that you should probably do a lot of interval trainings, go on the track, do some 400 repeats, um, do some tempo runs at goal pace. Um, yeah, so definitely tempo. And if you are planning or if you want to get more endurance, same thing. If you want to run long, you got to run long. So you just have to practice. And um, yeah, steady but slowly build the mileage and the time and really take it easy. Like my long runs are usually a minute slower than my goal pace sometimes even more than that and it, it was so confusing and it took me really long to really believe that this works but I can tell you last year really the whole prep for Berlin and New York I ran all my long runs uh over a minute slower than my goal pace and I easily hit that pace in the race so because of that combination of those long endurance runs and then like the speed work like you said right, the tempo right. runs and things exactly. like that Yes, yes. So if you have that combination of everything, a little speed work during the week and then the long, easy long runs on the weekends, um, for me, that works just perfectly. But I also know people, of course, who do their long runs at goal pace. But I think those, mm, I wouldn't say they just, they run just faster in the race altogether. But the people I know are very, like, they're more competitive. They're way faster than I am. And they run most of their long runs at goal pace. But I don't know. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I 
yeah, I imagine, like you said, there's a lot of people in New York training for races, super fast, whatever. Um, one of the quotes that I think of often is like, comparison is the thief of joy. Do you ever so compare yourself true. to That's other a great people? Topic. Do you catch yourself doing that sometimes? Mm-hmm. I used to be. I used to be like that. And um, also here again, really the running community uh, that I'm in really helped me a lot. I think... Um, I don't know, like you, you can just do your thing, like do your thing and be happy with what you are capable of. And that's just enough, you know, but especially now with uh, social media and, you know, everyone shares just their best on Instagram and uh, it's, it's really rough to, you know, not get caught up in the comparison, but um, no, now I really don't do it anymore, but I would say like two, three years ago, if I had a certain goal for a race and I didn't hit it, and then I, I was like, oh my God, now I have to post that I didn't do it or I couldn't make it or whatever, you know? So I don't know. Just be real, you know? It's fine. And you don't have to be as fast as whoever is running next to you. You don't know what their story is or the person who's slower. Like, you have no idea what this person is going through or why they're fast or slow or whatever. Everyone is their own, has their own story. and. I don't know. Like I'm not, I'm not comparing myself anymore. I don't think it's healthy. Yeah. And especially for when you're doing those long hours, hours, long runs, if you're just thinking about your comparison to other people, like, like you said, you have your creative moments, your breakthroughs, all the great, you know, things that are going through your mind um, that I feel like, yeah, is just so much better and so much more healthy, better brain food than figuring out if you're fast enough to post or fast enough, you know, as fast as this person or running, you know, a PR as fast as this person. And if you think about it, if you, let's say you're outside and then I remember doing that, that I would pass someone or actually someone would pass me much faster than I was running. Now I know maybe this person was doing a very hard interval at this point, you know, almost like, and just like this very fast pace and I'm doing an easy run. Who knows? You know, like you if I compare myself with this person, I'm just going to feel shitty. So I just stop. (laughs) Yeah. And like, who knows what, if they're at the end of their run, if they're just faster overall, it's like in that split second though, it's just so interesting that you say that because in that split second, when that person passes you while you're on your jog in New York, whatever, it's like, we can have all these thoughts that just like come out. You're like, why are they faster than me? How far are they running? You know, all those things. And so just staying in your lane and just running because you love it and loving the way that it makes you feel at least that's how I always, you know, look at it too. It's just, I always feel so good afterwards, no no matter how short, no matter how long, no matter what I'm going through, no matter if I'm having a good day or a bad day, or I'm stressed or I'm trying to think about something, or I just need, I just know that I'm feeling kind of funky. I just need to get outside and go for a run. It's like, no matter what, it's just like the cure for me. Right. Yeah. And really all my friends, they all run different paces. Like I have, super super fast friends uh, they're running a three-hour marathon and then I have friends who are running a five-hour marathon but they all run a marathon so to me they're all heroes you know just it doesn't matter how fast or how slow yeah what would you tell someone that is listening to this podcast that is maybe thinking mm, I want to run but I'm not a runner I've tried it but I'm not sure and kind of dealing with some of those feelings of doubt or comparison what would be something that you would tell them because they're listening right now <laughs> um I would definitely say give it a little time because I remember when I first started out with running outside like my my, even my inner organs, like uh, this whole new moving of everything was just so weird. So I had this weird side stitches. And I get that a lot too, that people ask me, I have side stitches. I don't know what to do. Like, will this ever stop? Or I'm always sore. Like you've got to push through, you know, give yourself time. I would say at least three months and then see how, if, you, if you still think that it sucks because it won't. Like you will get better eventually and it will feel feel easier and um just make sure that you're wearing good shoes. That's something I always say. Like make sure you're wearing proper running shoes that fit your feet. And um then just give it time and enjoy the journey. I think it's it's beautiful and it's also beautiful what comes out of it. I've changed so much over the years just by because of all the miles that I was doing by myself on the road, you know? So, um, 
it makes you it makes you better a better person i would say Mm. Thank you so much for being here on Self Love and Sweat, the podcast. It's been such a pleasure talking with you. Let everybody know where they can find you on everywhere. Yes, yeah, on everywhere. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, on Instagram, you can find me at uh, Running Brina. And uh, my website is uh, runningbrina.com. And that's it. I don't have any fancy TikToks or anything like that. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's where all the magic is. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. You guys follow her on Instagram, check out her website, tons of amazing, incredible content, inspiration and running realness. That's for sure. So yeah, thank you for being here. Have a good rest of your day in New York and talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Self Love and Sweat, the podcast. Hey, do me a favor. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, give us a review. This really helps a lot. And share this with a friend. I'm only one person, and with your help, we can really spread the message of self love and sweat and change more lives all around the world. I'm London Souza, reminding you that you deserve a life full of passion, presence, and purpose fueled by self-love and sweat. This podcast is a HitSpot Austria production.